Hi, thanks for joining me. I'm Chris Maragakis of Simply Be Wellbeing. I'm a women's life coach, podcaster and speaker and wellbeing provider. I'm also a mindfulness and meditation teacher. Welcome to Mindful Mutterings. Please like, share and subscribe and thanks for listening. Hi, thanks for joining me. So I'm going to talk this week about um, how we can live well, how we can choose to be happy and how we can find joy and create excitement and and enlightenment and enrichment in our lives. Because I think that for lots of us, life just becomes almost like a daily hamster wheel of getting up, sorting out kids or pets or responsibilities, maybe just going to work, doing the housework, getting the shopping, coming home. And then, you know, for lots of us blobbing out in the evening, maybe with a takeaway, maybe with a glass of wine, or maybe just getting lost in some TV, only living for weekend and holidays just so that we can rest. And in my opinion, this is not living, this is existing. Because living is when we consciously create our lives, when we make things happen for us, when we look for joy in the little things, so that every day we are happy and excited and squeezing every moment out of our time. I mean, does that sound exhausting to you? Because that's how I live and I love life. I get up early every morning, to be honest, some mornings I'm not jumping out of bed. But even before I've got out of bed, I'm saying thank you for the possibilities that today will bring. And I truly mean that. I'm excited to see what will happen each day because I believe, I do believe in karma and reincarnation. But at the moment, this is the only life I've got. And I don't know how long I'm going to be here, you know, in the same way that none of us know how long we've got. And so I, I want to live every experience. I want to I want to enjoy life. I want to see new things. I want to meet new people, taste new foods. I just want to get the most out of every single day. And I don't want to miss anything. And so that's how I live my life. And I, although that sounds very busy, there's also lots of self-care time in there. And there's also lots of self-reflection. I have a really strong meditation practice. And I spend a lot of time relaxing and chilling with family and friends. So it's all about the balance. But I don't want to just go through the motions every day. I want to grab life. And that's what I'm hoping I'll inspire you to do with this um, episode. So I really believe that being happy is a choice. Now, we can't control all the things that are going to happen to us in life. And we probably won't like a lot of the things that happen. And we might not like some of the people that we meet. And in fact, some of them may cause us terrible pain and suffering. But the one thing that we can absolutely control is how we choose to respond to these things. So we can choose to be stressed out, miserable, jealous, angry, or we can choose to be happy. And I I don't mean that we have to be happy every minute of every day. I just mean that our general mindset tends to polarise and either we're a happy, positive person or we tend to be a sad, miserable person. And with everything, what we're looking for is balance. And obviously there's times when we're sad i mean uh, when we lose someone we're sad and we need time to grieve but we can still choose how we want to respond to these events and how we choose to move through the process and i have to stress we must all go through a process it's the way that we're designed and we have to learn or come up with coping skills for when things don't go the way we planned or we wanted them to it's okay to be frustrated or gutted But don't let that be the way that you spend the rest of your day. Don't let one thing become the sole focus of your day or your week or your month. Accept if what it is, move through it. So what I'm saying is that we can make a conscious choice each and every day to be happy, to look for the things that are going well, to enjoy the things that we do, even if it's something we would normally think of of as a drag, like ironing, for example, It's not my favourite pastime and I used to really resent having to do it. But then I thought, this is crazy. I could choose not to do the ironing, but I don't want to walk around in crumpled clothes. So if I'm not willing to drop the job, I need to change the way I think and feel about the job to stay happy. So that's what I did. Instead of resenting having to do it, I got myself to a place of feeling grateful that I had clothes to iron and an iron that makes the job easier. And I'm pleased to have my clothes looking nice. And it's not that there's some magic formula to being happy. It's that you have to want to feel happy and be willing to put in the necessary work to change the way you normally think about things. And this can be done through mindfulness. 
now obviously I've been doing this for years and I've taken lots of time to go within and and do so every single day and identify and challenge and change the thoughts that don't make me happy and some of that has involved being honest about some very unpleasant truths about myself and then resolving to work on them but I can honestly say that doing the work is so worth it I mean there's things about me I don't like there's things about me I'm still trying to work on but I do put the work in and I do work really hard on my mindset and questioning why thoughts are making me unhappy or angry or jealous or sad and it's not that I don't feel these emotions of course I do you know sometimes I'm as naffed off with life as everybody else is but the point is I have strategies and tools to help me move through that and I make sure I use them I'm proactive in using them because I don't want to waste a couple of days feeling the just because I didn't, I didn't know how to change something or I didn't know how to move my mindset on. I want to resolve things quickly and proactively so that I can, I can move forward. Um, so as I said at the beginning, I love my life and for most of the day I am happy and fulfilled. Um, and I know that might sound lovely, especially if life is nice and easy. And let's be honest, we only ever view other people's lives from the outside looking in. So we never really know how much of a struggle their life is. But I think the key to true happiness is learning to do it all when it's all going tits up, pardon the expression. So I'm going to talk you through the things that you can do to change the way you think about life so that you can start to choose to feel happy and fulfilled for most of the time too. And I think really it's about starting small and it's about being realistic and beginning with setting an intention each day to be happy. An intention is just another word for an aim or a goal or, you know, a focus. So you get up in the morning and your focus is to have a really good day. Today's going to be a good day. Today I'm going to have a really good day. Today things are going to go well for me. Today I'm grateful for all the opportunities that came my way. Something along like that, because once you've focused your energy on that first thing in the morning, then you've already kind of set your expectation for the day. And your mind is already then, or the subconscious part of your mind is already looking to find the things that resonate with that thought. And so you're already on a head start. And then maybe start listing three things each day that you're grateful for. And depending on where you are with things, this might be really hard to do. It's okay, be gentle. Practice being grateful for maybe the device that you're listening to this on, or that maybe you have clean water to drink. Um, You know, start small, look around you and just find something. And this is literally brain training or rewriting neural pathways. And all we're doing is we're just going to start the process of training our brain to look for positives in a situation, however dire. And there is always something that we can learn or something that we can grow from, no matter what the situation we're in is. Rather than automatically zooming in on the negatives and, um, and, and looking for what can go wrong or what is wrong or how dramatic it is or how upsetting it is or how awful it is. Because we already know it's awful. And we want to look for a way to, to find a way to deal with it and manage it and resolve it so that we can move on. And like every other well-being practice, it is a practice and it takes practice. It's not going to happen overnight. So be kind to yourself and build up slowly. The more grateful you are, the more your mind looks for other things to be grateful for. And you become more grateful. And again, the more grateful you are, the more your brain looks for other things to be grateful for. And so you're already moving your mood from lower emotions up to higher emotions you're starting to vibrate at a higher level energetically which is really good for your mindset it's really good for your body it's really good for your health and well-being and so it's just building up these layers of um, skills and strategies that help your life to change you don't want to be making big sweeping changes because they're, they're not very sustainable and they don't really work And again, it's not really rocket science either. It's the way we've been designed in alignment with natural law. And then it's about being open to new experiences, you know, obviously risk assess things. I don't want to be jumping off cliffs or doing anything daft. But instead of automatically saying no to something or looking for the potential problems that you might incur, say yes. And maybe experience it with curiosity and an expectation that it will be enjoyable and it will work out okay. Because really... It's going to happen however it happens anyway. It's just our mindset that dictates how we view the response or how we choose to see what's happening in front of us. If we're always looking for a negative, we will see a negative. If we look for a positive, we'll see a positive. And that's the kind of mindset change that we're trying to make. And then maybe use affirmations to help rewire your thinking. 
So an affirmation is just a phrase or a positive sentence that's based in the present tense and um, that you repeat often and often and often because when we have an idea or a belief and that belief or idea is repeated um, often it becomes more and more entrenched in the brain and it, because it's created a neural pathway and what we want to do is we want to create a neural pathway that is stronger or deeper than the original belief and we can do that through repetition the thing is, we have to be able to believe what we're saying. If we're saying something that is so out of our realm of belief, then our, our brain knows it's not right and it won't work. So it has to be something that you can absolutely believe in and you can get behind and you can then help to use it to rewire your brain. So that's one thing. Um, and one that I find really helpful uh, is, is this. And it's just that I say it often, everything always works out for me everything always works out for me because if I have that assumption and because I think I expect things to work out for me it often does I mean not always but I think I've made peace with that too <clears throat> excuse me and I'm happy to see where life takes me but if I have the general assumption that generally in my life everything is going to work out then I find it easier to problem solve when things don't go the way I want to or I find it easier to find new things to do I find interesting things come up and present themselves to me I find people are drawn to me you start a cycle because of the energy that you're giving off and so it's about making these small little changes in every area of your life to be attracting more of what you want into it and then it's about being as organized and proactive as you can be deal with things when they come in and if you can't ask for help because ignoring them causes stress and anxiety and these are not happy emotions these are not positive emotions that we want to be um, encouraging uh, setting goals is another really good way of helping to stay positive and on top of things and use problem solving tools to work out how you want your life to be and what you can do to make it happen take responsibility for yourself and then begin trying to accept people and situations for who or what they are instead of how you think they should be because that causes us so much misery when we get annoyed with oh they shouldn't talk to us like this or this shouldn't be happening it doesn't matter what we think they are talking to us like that and it is happening so what are we going to do about it and so the quicker that we can accept that this is the situation that's in front of us rather than going all around the houses and getting annoyed and angry and frustrated and you know getting all our friends and family on board whatever whenever we do that we've still got to come back to the original problem which is staring some, us in the face so the quicker we can get to a point of acceptance like right this is what's in front of me what am i going to do with it the quicker we can learn from it and move on and then accept when you're feeling cross or miserable and have some strategies to deal with those emotions maybe go for a walk listen to some music talk to someone but don't let those emotions become who you are we only have emotions to show us or to highlight that there is something wrong with our thinking or that's what the negative emotions do and the positive emotions show us that we're on track and we're in alignment so if you're experiencing a negative emotion it's because what you're thinking is not working for you and so this is an opportunity then to start challenging your thoughts which of course brings me to being mindful we need to start becoming aware of how we think about things so that we can work out which ones are causing us misery because obviously they're the ones we want to change and you can do this in meditation but to be honest it's difficult if you don't already have a good meditation practice in place that's not to say that everyone can't meditate and that you shouldn't strive to have a good meditation practice as you know that will always help everything in your life meditation makes everything better but there are different styles of meditation and maybe sitting with a question is not the right one for you to start off with maybe a walking meditation or maybe a chanting meditation would be more appropriate to the way your brain works so it's good to have a meditation practice and it's a brilliant well-being practice to have running alongside but when you're challenging thoughts or when you're trying to identify thoughts it might not be the practice for you so it might be easier to begin right by reflecting on your day and looking for the things that went really well and the things that didn't go as well as you had hoped and then when you find the things that didn't go to plan start examining it why didn't it go well could you have done anything differently what was it about the situation that caused you to have a negative emotion and why and what can you learn from it so that you don't find yourself in the same situation again 
And the more practice you get at this, the more patterns and triggers that you'll be able to identify, and then you'll know what you want to work on. And after developing this practice for a while, you might be able to move in on to starting to identify your feelings as things are happening and learning to slow down your responses, refusing to be triggered and slowly learning how to choose to respond instead. And that's where the true power comes from a practice like this. And for most of us, this is a huge mindset shift, you know, especially in the West where essentially the basis of all behavior and lifestyle is about looking externally for happiness you know uh, this person can make us happy that house can make us happy when i have that job when i have enough money you know when i'm thin when i'm beautiful when this when that actually all of that we're being sold a lie the only way you can ever find complete and utter happiness is when you've done the work within because you'll just be happier in nice clothes or in a bigger house or skinny and hungry and, you know it's it's all about working doing the work within and dealing with what we think because 90 percent of our thoughts every day are the same as the day before and they're the biggest controlling aspect of our life um and again all of these mindset checks mindset shifts and tools and everything else are a practice and this means it takes time to learn them and to integrate them into our life and it has to be practiced for us to get better at it so don't be too hard on yourself you know as long as you've started the process and have the intention to be more positive and look for more joy then it's all good and the more you do the better you'll feel small consistent tweaks are always much more beneficial than the huge sweeping changes so start with something that you can be consistent with, do it all the time and layer it up the, and then build some, another tweak on top of it and another tweak and another tweak so that they're all sustainable and at a pace that you can manage and be patient with yourself. Change is coming. And some of you may feel that you're so entrenched in your own head that this is impossible without some help. And that's fantastic. There's no shame in asking for help. It demonstrates self-worth and courage and should be applauded. Uh, and if that is you and you want me to be your help, then please get in touch. But don't ever think that asking for help is a failure. Actually, it takes great strength and courage to recognise when we need support from someone else. And we would hope that we have a network around us of people that would do the same for us. You know, if we're asking for help from someone or from a professional, then we would hope that in a, someone else's moment of need whatever that might be they would do the same for us so please don't think of asking for help as a failure it's actually incredibly empowering and shows strength of character and depth of understanding of who you are and what you need and self-regulation so it's to be applauded so i really hope that this has helped to get you thinking about some of the things that you can start to do to change the way that you think and if you're a largely positive person, that's brilliant. And maybe this has given you some ways that you can become even more positive and uh, work on your mindset and move forward with that. And if you're a person that maybe struggles with your uh, mindset, then maybe there's been a little nugget of information in this that can help you to start to see where you can make small changes that work for you. Whatever you choose to do after listening to this, please remember we only have this moment right now. So why waste it being miserable? Embrace it, enjoy it, and love it. And as always, thank you for listening. Take care. Bye.